This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Whitmer here, along with Dave Oster. Hey, everybody. And you might be wondering, guys, it's the Primetime Podcast. Sean told me I wasn't going to see your face or hear your voice, Ricky, for at least four weeks. He already apologized what the hell last week. On? I know, I heard him. I just still wanted to say, um, Sean, family emergency. Hope everything's going okay with him. Um, I'm stepping in to kind of come back from my sabbatical because I'm not that far. Right? It's not like I went on vacation or anything. I got that. That much money, but we are talking NBA and college basketball today as we're going to look at the NBA Combine biggest winners and losers from the weekend. Then we're going to dive into Kobe White and Darius Garland. I don't know what the topic is going to be, but it's going to be about their promises and kind of where they're going to go. Who do we think gave them those promises? I'm just going to figure out the title later for YouTube, and then we will have Pat Hill. On the podcast, one of our patrons on patreon.com backslash most valid podcast to talk about Shaka Smart and his future with Texas because it's been four years and he kind of hasn't done anything, Dave. So we're going to look at that to end the podcast. If you want to be like Pat, who will be on later on the show, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valid podcast for as low as a dollar. You get the MVP podcast a month early, but more importantly, Dave, what else do they get? We were talking to Retro and Jake. On our what? You get access to our Discord server. And that is 24-7 access to, well, not 24-7, because like I said the last time, we got to sleep. Um, I'm not a machine, and I can't do, I can't do what there. Sean did. The whole crew's on there and week. active, you know. Mm-hmm. So you can talk to the MVP crew. You can talk to the MVP community as well, other real MVPs for as low as a dollar. And then if you want to be like Pat, $10, the gold tier, you get to come on a podcast of your choice each and every month and talk about what you would like to talk about. So check that link out in the description. But Dave, we are going to start with the NBA Combine. Happened over the weekend right here in our backyard in beautiful Chicago. Beautiful is a strong term for what the eh, weather is right now. It's a little chilly. Like I was looking, it's like tomorrow's going to be rainy in 50s. It's like um, the whole week. And then like uh, apparently Wednesdays and Thursdays, it's supposed to get up into those low 80s. And then back to storming Shh. because it's a holiday weekend. Shh. <laughs> I just, Dave, I saw Five 80s, days of storms. And I was like, dude, like that 80s is going to be really good for those two days. Sure. Um, but we're taking a look at the combine, kind of biggest winners and losers. I'm going to throw it to you and let you pick first. I'm going to let you pick two things. First off. The first guy you want to talk about. And number two, whether we start off with a winner or a loser, I will let you take the first one. Sure, 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 sure. So I'm going to take one of the biggest losers okay. from this combine. And it's, it might strike you as weird, mm-hmm. but it's Brandon Clark. Okay. Because we can't we got his official measurables. Mm-hmm. And while he is confirmed as 6'8 and 6'8 wingspan, uh, his weight, solid range... The big problem is, like, that's great measurables, and, and it's elite for his athleticism and his uh, vertical mm-hmm. if he were small forward. Yeah. He's not a small forward. He's a power forward. He's power forward or yeah. center at the mm-hmm. NBA. So what does that mean for him, and what does that mean for his draft stock, Ricky? Well, and, I mean, Brandon Clark's been a guy that I will admit in my lottery. When we did the lottery mock, yeah, I had him way too high. I had him at four. Did you? That was a little bit of a reach. Did, are you um, going to come out and say it right now to the people? Yeah, it was a little bit of a reach at the time. Um, but that's the thing I will say, sidebar, Yeah. Um, that I love about doing the mock live. Oh, man, the pressure. We, dude, it is pro- – like – they don't know, but like the mock that they usually see is like my third, maybe at least my second. Yeah. But sometimes my third or my fourth go like oh, yeah. go at it. It I'll takes just throw, time to cultivate. I will just throw names on a page and then yeah. let it sit and then go, all right, let me rearrange these. But when better. Sean's just like go. <laughs> and you're just like, what the fuck? You're supposed to go to Ricky first, man. You're I not know. supposed to put me on the I know, like that. right? That threw me off because I was ready with my guy. I was it's like, not. Dave, it's like, oh, Oh, I have my. You're keeping me on my toes. I know, I know. I was a little shocked too by that, but that's the thing with Brandon Clark. I feel like it's not going to hurt him that much. It's just going to be like because he's a guy that before the combine has kind of been on a steady rise. Where 
Brandon was the one where he's like, he's in my top five so on my high. big board. Um, and everyone's like, dude, what are you talking about? Um, and then coming up to the combine, people are like, he could be a top five player in this draft. Like, he could Not a top rise. five pick, but um, a top five player in the exactly, class. Exactly. Um, on a big board different than a mock draft. But he is still a guy to me that I think is going to be a late lottery guy. So I'm looking at his range between 11 and 14, like, Boston, if he's there at 14, Boston will take him. I still think if he goes to, if he's there for the Minnesota Timberwolves, they would be stupid not to grab him, especially what's going on um, with their position at the four with Taj Gibson um, being a free agent this year, and you're not going to bring back Taj Gibson unless it's like really cheap and it's like a vet minimum um, for one year. And I mean, even the Hornets, like the Hornets could use power forward. The Heat could really go with anything. Um, that they want. So to me, it's like it stops his rise in my case, right? But it's not going to tank him out of the lottery. But when you hear the names of guys who have the same six eight mm-hmm. and a quarter inch shoes, six eight and a quarter wingspan, two hundred and seven pound frame, mm-hmm. you're hearing guys like Gordon Hayward, Clay Thompson, Rodney Hood. Yeah. Credit due. This is I, I am going off of the ESPN uh, draft combine mm-hmm. winners losers just to give you guys an idea of that listing being put mm-hmm. together. So when you get an idea of that frame, I get it. Like he, he needs to muscle up, but mm-hmm. does this add more questions? We already thought positionless player. Like, I'm not sure what he really is. We were thinking defensively, he can be a five sometimes mm-hmm. offensively, maybe a four. Now you're like, is he a four or a three? He doesn't have a shot on the outside yet. So you can't put him with the three safely, mm-hmm. but he's got the rim protecting instincts of a four or five. So I don't yeah. know. I think it adds more questions. Um, mm-hmm. You still look at the tape, like his whole season, we've got him on tape playing at Gonzaga. We've got two years mm-hmm. prior to that at San Diego State. So, like, uh, you've got enough tape of him. You either mm-hmm. like his gameplay or you don't. But my question is, is, even if you like him, how do you, you know, where does he fit on your team? And that one, I don't know. That's going to be interesting. I think that he's a player where his success at the NBA level is going to depend heavily on his coach's ability to mm-hmm. find a home for him on the court. You know, and this is just, I don't think he's going to be there because this team has the, what exact pick are they at? They're at 23. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to be that low. I feel like Brandon Clark, because of these measurables now, is going to need a team like Utah. Ah. And the reason why I say that is Utah's got Ruby, Rudy Gobert. Where if we've got our defensive stalwart, our rim protector, down low to where, yeah, we're going to play you at the four. And if Rudy has to come over and help you, like, and I kind of feel bad saying that because it's like you're drafting a guy then knowing he's going to need help defense almost but every he was single such a time. Good, well, no, he was such a good defender in mm-hmm. college. That's the thing that doesn't make sense. So it's like, great, you were able to dominate college defensively. Mm-hmm. But where are you going to be able to but be guys when are guys bigger, are faster, stronger? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And when the average power forward in the NBA is going to be a little bit bigger and mm-hmm. quite a bit heavier. And I get it. You're going to put on muscle, but you're already an older prospect coming mm-hmm. out. And I that, don't know. And that's there's, another there's thing. There's questions that, asked. And that's another thing that kind of scares me with it because if he was, let's say, 19, like yeah. 18, 19, I would say easy, like, hey, he's a guy that teams just have to be real with yep. and go, you've got to work on being a three. Like yep. that is your game. But like when you're an older prospect, it's like, is a team going to take a risk on you mm-hmm. if you're gonna be like, what's his position going to be in the NBA? That's what needs to be decided. Because if he's gonna work on being a three, yeah, then okay, I'll draft you knowing that's what you're gonna be. And then if you're gonna be a four, I'm gonna draft you knowing on that. Um, but the big thing that's a glaring thing, like you said, for the three, him playing the three, yep. is that I look at the free throw percentage, and usually because free throw percentage, if you're a good free throw it's shooter, an indicator. It, it's an indicator of a good shot, and he was 69%. That's terrible in my book. No. I'm, an, I'm, I'm a guy. 69% I'm, for a big man is not terrible. I'm, for a big man, no. But like I am a, and Sean knows this, I'm a free throw, free throw savant where I want that 80s, 90s, kind of. I know the 90s is almost untouchable, but I want like a low 80s free throw because I'm the kind of guy where, and people could disagree with me with this, it's the easiest shot in basketball. There's no one in your way. It's just practice. There's you just no have to put in, in time. Way. Exactly. Um, Same motion so, over and over and over. So for me, I see 69 and, I mean, not many attempts. He was only averaging about four per game. It's pretty um, good for Kyle. But they had a ton of, like, he was the main ball handler. Right. 
at Gonzaga. They share. Um, but then, like, from three, he barely took him, and he barely hit him, like 26%. So, I mean, if you're going to play the three, you're going to have to shoot from the outside. And that's where I go, can he develop that outside shot? Exactly. Which I'm kind of, I'm not on. Like, I don't think he can, and I think that it's going to be maybe a a little bit of a struggle. And, like, even with Minnesota now, because I said, like, they could take him. Yeah. Like, I don't even know, then, if that's a good fit fit because that, we, everybody's been mocking him there since yeah. the beginning of time because you're like his defense fits perfectly with cat's mm-hmm. offense and it makes up for each other and they're a great pairing because you can play cat outside mm-hmm. in and you can play him inside out yeah and it works out perfect mm-hmm. and he may still be a great four in the nba it's just the size concern is real i mean it's not the worst measurements we've had in this uh mm-hmm. combine but it is you know, confirming what we we had fears about. Mm-hmm. I was hoping to see him like six nine and three quarters. Yeah, six ten would have been great, but mm-hmm. obviously he is not. So unfortunate. But, the the one guy I'm gonna bring yeah. up is I'm gonna go winner on okay. this one. Okay, Taco Fall. To me, this is a guy where I know you're gonna roll your eyes, Dave, and you're gonna I be like, already roll my you, eyes. You're well, gonna be watching. like, well, Ricky, he is not gonna be anything in the NBA because, like, if if Sean is so down on Bull Bull and his knees, what's Taco Fall gonna do? And I saw the when I saw the measurements alone, I was like, holy shit! He like, big. if he can play, like this guy, the official measurements from I'm getting this from busting brackets. Um, he measured seven seven. Um, which was one inch taller than he was listed in college, yep. with a wingspan of eight two and a standing reach of nearly ten three. This is a guy that I know that like you look at his frame and it's you kind of see the same thing as ball ball, where it's like, dude don't dude looks like he's he doesn't thicker. have a ton of muscle. He's, he's thicker than ball ball, but it's like, you know, he's still got that kind of thinner frame. My question is, and I'm saying winner knowing he's probably going to be a mid at the highest to late second rounder, but is this a guy that a team later in that second round who maybe needs a center, and I'm looking at Tankathon, and the team they have him going with, I would absolutely love Golden State. Ugh. Like, you know what? They've already got their team. They're the only team in basketball where it's like, just give them a good five. That's not Andrew Bogut. Because Andrew Bogan at this point, he was good when he was the first stint. Now this stint's like, yeah, we'll put you out there to start, but you're not going to play many minutes, Andrew. Look, Like, I know DeMarcus Cousins is supposed to be there five this year. Yeah. got injured. Look, Taco Fall is a player who needs a lot of time to continue to grow his game. Mm-hmm. He, he's still fairly raw in his skill set basketball-wise, and I would love to see him spend a year or two in the G League uh, really focusing on building up like his core mechanics. Mm-hmm. Do I think he can be out there for more than ten minutes in, in a game? Probably not. He's 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 in the Boban range, but he's like worse than Boban by a considerable amount. Okay. Offensively, he is not good. Defensively, he is still slow. Uh, his size is is a matter of just impressiveness. I I will give you that. Mm-hmm. And when he is near the rim, it's damn hard to go up there against him. Um, but with that being said. The modern NBA is so dependent on the pick and roll system and being able to switch, and he can do neither of those. He can't defend either of those things. Mm-hmm. So I, I think he is a limited player who, due to his size, is absolutely going to get drafted or at least picked up a two way contract after the draft is over. Um, he's he's a G leaguer, and you'll see him novelty mints in the mm-hmm. NBA. I it would be great if he could be more, but like it's just there's no way he has the ability to move at the speed and pace mm-hmm. that's required. The thing that I think back to, too, with Taco Fall, and this is kind of a little bit of a glimming light in my case. Yeah. Although Zion, think about the tournament, although Zion against UCF in that game where Duke barely escaped um, the Golden Knights, um, Zion still had 32. But that was a game that both he and Taco Fall was a battle the whole time. Taco Fall fouled out at the very end of the game. Zion was one foul from fouling out in yep. that one, and Taco Fall had three blocks in that game. And I kind of think with the size that we're seeing at the Combine and what I saw in that game, was it a perfect game from Taco Fall? No, but if he was able to show that glimmer of defense against the guy that all year we've said, number one pick in the in the draft, he's going to come in and make an impact right away. 
it kind of gives me that glimmer of hope where it's like, hey, if I can get him where I think I can later in that second round, it might be one of those where, hey, I'm going to take a flyer on him because a second round pick is almost like to some teams it's like a second round pick is meaningless. Like oh, we see a lot they're, of them, they're like, a lottery ticket. It's basically that, and it's also like, well, we don't need this pick. We're not going to waste the roster spot. We'll sell this pick for cash. Um, also, that's what we see with the second rounder. So he's one I'm intrigued with, and I'm glad that the measurements came out that they were, because now he can get mocked into the second round. Like before the combine, I wouldn't even put him in a two rounder. I would say. He'd be undrafted, signed by a team. Let's see what you do in summer league. But now I can say there's a chance he goes late second round in the NBA draft. I'm going to stick with your theme of big man and okay. say bull bull as a disappointment. <laughs> as a disappointment. Uh, he's he big. <laughs> he big. Uh, his, his measurables were great up mm-hmm. until you got to his weight. He measured in yeah. like 208. Uh huh. Like, was it 208 or was it 206? Here, let me see. It was so he had a standing seven foot two and a quarter in shoes, seven seven wingspan, and weighed 208 pounds down yeah. considerably from the 234 he weighed in at the Nike Basketball Academy last August. Which I get it. The man had a foot problem, which meant mm-hmm. that, hey, guess what? I, I can't work out. So I'm not going like his conditioning got mm-hmm. thrown to shit. So I get it. But he, him losing all that weight is like starting over again as far we're, as conditioning. We're the summer. assuming he lost all that muscle weight, right? Well, yeah, yeah, that's basically. that's what goes. So I, I am a little concerned about that. Mm-hmm. And I was I was really happy, you know, that he had been lifting in college up to that point because he, he came in at like you said, two thirty five. Mm-hmm. It's a decent weight. That's not too bad with that frame, but he is so frail, thin, mm-hmm. and I, I am just concerned about that weight issue. So I think that, yes, once he once he is completely healthy again, gets back to a lifting re- regiment, goes mm-hmm. on official diet with strength and conditioning coaches, like, yeah, I, I'm not uber worried, but, like, him coming in and, like, dude, just by not being able to work out, you, mm-hmm. like, crushed your weight down. Yeah. That means that, like, there's a legitimate chance that you have to be heavily focused on strength and conditioning. That's that's a forever part of your career because of your size and your build, which I get it. I knew that was always a thing, but this was a little bit surprising to me, actually, as well. Well, the thing that I keep thinking now, especially after the combine, and I know on our Hawk segment, which, depending on when I decide to put this up, yep. it's either going to come out the same day as today, later in the day as today, or yep. it's already up. At this point, um, depending on if this if you're listening this Tuesday, it's up. If you're listening to it Wednesday, it's up. Um, in our Hawks best fits, I know I brought up in that one the Jackson Hayes because of the defense that he brings. Although yeah. he is younger and needs a little bit more work, there's a part of me though that just keeps now after this the weight and like you said, where Bobble's going to need some time. I almost think he's a perfect pick. For the Atlanta Hawks. And the reason why I say that is I think of Joel Embiid. When Joel Embiid was coming out, he was thin. Yep. We were talking about his knee injuries, and it's like, is he even going to be able to do anything in the NBA because of his size, his weight, and because of the injury history that he had? Same thing we're questioning Ball Ball about. And the 76ers took him because we all know, TTP, trust the process. Mm-hmm. Um, although Joel Embiid is now fucking the process because they lost. No, he's still point. he's still doing his thing. He was a little upset after the loss. That's what I'm making. Did you fun see his of. Twitter? I did. I did. Thank I'm just you. making fun of him for the, the comment that he made. Who asked that somebody law. that shit after you lose your game seven? <laughs> like I'd be like, go fuck yourself, sir. Little. That's I, pretty much what I he said. I watched it. I was like. Jo- Joel, I get where you're coming from. A little composure. Be be composed. Jimmy here, can't talk man. for him. Yeah, Jimmy cannot talk for him. But I mean, with Ball Ball, I feel like the Hawks are that same kind of a team where they are building their young team. They could take a stab on Ball Ball, whether it's at eight, whether it's at ten, no matter where they think they're going to get him. Yep. And he could be someone that maybe, I say maybe, but it's a lot of hope too because. Like, nobody knew Joe was going to be the guy to work his ass off and basically put on that weight and become the player that he is today. And I'm not saying Ball Ball is going to be the next Joel Embiid and basically Say take it. the NBA by storm. Say it. But the Atlanta, Hawks, <laughs> the Atlanta Hawks can 
take a stab on ball, 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 ball. And if he develops the same way and has the same attitude towards getting bigger with weight and working on his game, getting back from his injury, he could be good with Atlanta. Like the question for ball, ball is if he goes to a team where they cannot wait and cannot give him time. I don't think he... It, it's not the fact of waiting. It, it's like just understand his body and being able to be bodied mm. up down low in, in the low post. There's no way like him weighing 208 versus mm-hmm. him going up against Joel Embiid. Yeah. Like that matchup would be hilarious. It's like asking mm-hmm. Thon Maker to play defense against... It's just... Yeah, we get it. He's tall, but he also weighs like half a leaf. You mm-hmm. know, it's just not... It's not going to work out defensively for you. Yeah. Um... Yes, he he can you know stick his arms up and alter shot angles, but that's about the best you could hope for. Mm-hmm. Defensively, he's not exactly a savant anyway. You're really taking him on the offensive upside because he has such a great shot. He can hit ball handle. All of that's still there. Mm-hmm. And this just I saw some hilarious people on Reddit who I'll leave nameless. They're like, well, this just means he's slimming down to play the four, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, they're like, he's a ball handling Kevin Durant. He's gonna be that stretch four. He's the next Kevin Durant. Yeah, he's the next Kevin Durant. It's like gonna... Jesus Christ, people. He is <sighs> worlds apart. I'm gonna go on the other side. So you the first guy you mentioned was a loser. I mentioned only losers. You yeah. mentioned only okay. winners. That's that's the game okay, we're playing right, right now, Ricky. I'm gonna mention a loser though. Oh, okay. Um, we'll switch it up. Yeah. And this is kind of like a take it with a grain of salt sure. kind of a thing. Yep. Grant Williams, mm. I know he shot like shit, basically. Yeah, his, his, his five on five games were poor. But here's the thing. First off, I I have a feeling with the five on five games and some of like the drills, mainly the five on five, I kind of have the same feeling that like Mark said about DK Metcalf on the NFL side. Let's hear Where it was like... Yeah, who cares? He ran a 40 really fast in his underwear. Like, that's not going to be like... We care. When, when, he ran, when he ran the cone drill, he was... Like, Mark's big thing was, but when he ran the cone drill, he was really slow. And I feel like... Yeah, I'm not saying that everything at the combine is not important. Right. But I feel like we have to take it with a grain of salt. Where is Grant Williams in the NBA going to be exactly what he was at Tennessee? No. He is not going to be the guy in crunch time that you go to for a final shot. The guy that Grant Williams is for me is, is he now a second rounder in my mind? Absolutely. Like Whoa. At the, at the, at the Whoa. I could see him sneaking in to the like late first round. Yeah. But I feel like now he is slipping into the second, but he is a guy that you draft to basically be, to me, yep. that presence in the locker room, where he's going to be a good presence in the locker yeah. room. As he grows into a veteran, he's going to be, I almost want to compare him to Draymond Green. But Draymond this, Green's been amazeballs. No, no, I know that. And that's the thing of, like, I don't know if he's going to get to the level of play of Draymond, but what Draymond brings to that Warrior team as kind of like the so background name some guy. Some sixth man, seventh man, eighth man on a team who who has got the emotional get go. But see, I don't think he's limited to just being a six man. If he works his ass off, he could be a guy that's in a starting lineup for a team. And for me, the biggest thing he brings to a team is that locker room presence. See, or what? he just or he just got nervous at the combine and didn't shoot well. I think it had a lot to do with the fact that he wasn't playing with his team in his scheme. This is a guy who benefited heavily from being surrounded at Tennessee by talent and being able to play in a system that revolved around him heavily. The Admiral. Yeah, he had he had the Admiral Schofield out mm-hmm. there. Grant obviously was a big key, big piece himself, but mm-hmm. like my point is when you're used to playing with those guys, the the 5 and 5 games at the combine are very free flowing. Yeah. It's very much uh <laughs> It, it, it's not like usually you know playing the at the Y, but it's usually like, the ISO guys that yeah, do the best. There, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of individual ways to, to succeed. Mm-hmm. And Grant Williams, what he does is he makes the small things big things. He he's yeah. great uh, as a post passer. He's a solid team player. He plays decent help mm-hmm. defense. Like there's a lot of those things where he sets guys up to succeed by doing the little things, and that's not going to show in that five on five scrimmage in mm-hmm. my mind. So I don't, I don't get dr- too disappointed with dropping him because of his poor shooting performance mm-hmm. there. Like, you watch throughout the year. The man lives and dies at the stripe. That is how he earns his money. So, when I watch him play, 
I was disappointed, but honestly not shocked because in mm-hmm. my in the back of my head, right, I was like, system player, system player. Yeah, and I mean, that's the big thing of, and that's why I brought up like the NFL thing that Mark and I talked about is because I think that's a case here of like, just because he had a bad performance at the combine doesn't mean he's a bad prospect. And that's a, that's the thing where I yep. wanted to bring Grant Williams up. Technically a loser, but won't be a loser if he goes to a team that knows how to fit him into their system or their system fits him as a player, which would be right. ideal. Are so I'll, I'll, I'll flip the work? other side then. Okay. And I'll take a guy who sucked in college, okay, but had a good performance at the combine. I'm going to take the Nasir guy. Little. Oh, you didn't take the guy that I was going to take next. Go no, ahead. talk no, about I'm, Nasir. I'm taking Nasir Little. Top ten pick according to Sean. Top, he may <laughs> he may fucking go well. Top yeah. ten. Like he's got a body. He measured in with mm-hmm. the NBA body, and Sean and I laughed about that. But it was like, yeah, no, you measured in well. Uh, you. You look like you are confident in yourself and you're talking about your experience in college. Mm-hmm. And some people may not like the fact that he's throwing a veteran coach in Roy Williams uh, under a bus. I'll get into that. I'll get into it. But at the same time, I, I think that he is uh, either whoever's whispering in his ear mm-hmm. or he himself. This confidence is a good thing for him. Mm-hmm. Size wise, I was hoping he'd be a little bit taller, uh, but six six with that wingspan. Pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that he comes in as a above average defender already, a, a good slasher, and he's just got the athleticism um, that kind of reminds me of. Uh, I'm trying to think of an athletic player from the past couple of years. Maybe, maybe, maybe Jalen Brown esque as so far as athleticism. You want to know what's funny about you saying that? Yeah. ESPN has here um, after they list his size and weight. Yep. They said which. Place him somewhere between Jalen Brown and Kawhi Leonard. It's probably in the back in of my head. In terms of yeah. physical comps, this is probably in the back of my head. That's why I read it. <laughs> yeah, Jalen Brown's been a guy that we've been joking around all year. That it's like, yeah, Nasir Little. We've shit on him all year. So he's going to go to the NBA and actually play well for the team he's on. Because that's what Jalen Brown. He just did. needs time to develop his shot mm-hmm. and, and to be put in a system where it's more than just a uh, whatever role he was given in college. Yeah. I don't want to say anything else about that. Well, and my big thing is I will get into that because I was not you do a fan. You. I was not a fan of those comments that he made because it's kind of a double-edged sword in my mind where I do agree with you, the confidence is a big thing. And with him and Cam Reddish, I'll say, confidence is the big thing. If they can get confidence in their play, they will be good at the NBA. The thing that just rubbed me the wrong way is the fact that I kind of – maybe it's because I put myself – in those situations. Yeah. And if it was me, I would have taken kind of the stance of, I'm not going to blame my coach. I'm going to blame myself. We're yeah. like, like if I'm a scout, if I'm a GM, if I'm a president of basketball, anyone in the front office for a team, I don't want to hear a player blame someone else, blame something else. You want that player that's going to put the onus on him and be like, you know what? It was me. Should have worked harder. This didn't work. I don't know why it didn't click. I, I'm going to move on from it. But basically, I'm putting it all on me. I can only get better by myself. Or not by yourself, but like you're the main person that helps you get better. Like If you don't have the drive, you're not going to get better. So to me, it kind of just rubbed the wrong way. And it's mm-hmm. like I understand if you had a bad relationship with Roy Williams because it kind of – like you said – old veteran head coach, Roy Williams kind of seems like the guy to me that it's either my way or the highway, basically, where you're going to fit into this system. I'm going to tell you what to do, and this is what you're going to do, yeah. or else you're going to ride the pine pony. Um, and that's basically, if that was the case, and it rubbed Nasir the wrong, wrong way, I understand. But that is not something I would have come out and said. That is something in team interviews like behind closed doors i would have talked about without throwing it's just unclear about the specifics of his role on Mm -hmm. offense that's all he said and it it, it got a little blown up but Uh same time you got you look at the game tape you look at the stuff that's come around about him on the court you gotta learn sometimes that's gonna happen you say something to the media it will get twisted blown up it will get twisted heavily the guy that I thought you were going to steal from me, when you when you said a guy who didn't play well in college yep. that basically showed up for the combine, Quentin Grimes. This is Quentin. a guy this is a guy early on. I'm actually gonna I 
forgot where I had him on my first big board. All I know, it was ridiculously high. Sean had like, him at uh, him high? highest. Sean had him the highest. That's so all I remember. My very first big board yep. that Brandon and I did to start this season, yep. I had Quentin Grimes as my top 10 prospect. Yeah, I had him 10th in the nation. Then at 2.0, he dropped to 24, between 1 and 2. Then in 3, don't even think he was on it. Yeah, he wasn't even on my big board. Wasn't on the last one we did as well Our way me. too early um, mock 1.0. I believe Sean had him in the highest. I think we all may have mentioned him. I don't about know. I can pull that up. Yeah, and you guys um, could see those too if you were members of Patreon. Yeah, you can. If you get in that $1 tier, you could see. The NBA big board is going up this week because that's what we're it doing is. next week. Um, Sean had him ninth to the Cavaliers at the time. Uh-oh. Um, Am I a liar? I had him seventh Uh-oh. to the Bulls at the time. No, that's not right. I thought I had – oh, I had Zion the highest. I yeah, had Zion to the Magic. Yeah. Um, because I was like, no, I thought I had Zion to the Bulls. No, it was Sean that had Zion to the Bulls. Um, so Sean had him ninth to the Cavs. I had him seven to the Bulls. Right, row. You did not yes. have him. Yes. Validation. But you had Nasir Little at number two. But – I had John Morant on that list, and neither y'all did. No, I didn't. You had him at five to the Magic. Yeah, because guess what? The Magic need a point guard. My, I've been saying that for three years. The only two guys that are like, wow, was um, Shemi Shatu, because he was no nowhere near the top ten. Yeah. Um, now And Trey Jones for you. Yeah. And the only guy that's not in the lottery for me was Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes and Trey Jones I had at ten. Everyone out, like most of it, everyone yep. is in that discussion. I mean, Sean's Romeo Langford at number one was kind of like, ugh. Um, but a bold we, take. We thought it was going to be was a way little too bit early. better. That was the whole point. Um, but the guy I brought up was Quentin Grimes basically because of the tweet that I found mm-hmm. from Kevin um, Fla- Flattery. I think I said that Flaherty. right. F- Flaherty. That's right. Um, <laughs> it's K Flaherty at um, 247 said, wow, apparently Quentin Grimes impressed in first game. ESPN's broadcast quoted NBA team rep saying, what Quentin Grimes did in 19 minutes here was more impressive than his six months at the University of Kansas. He did. He was he was a very good <coughs> passer in that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also did decent defensively, too. Uh, Scoring-wise, I think he shot okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I would love to believe in him. It would be a great story that uh, as a five-star recruit uh, yeah. coming out of high school that uh, you were able to rehab one of the most disappointing college seasons that we've seen out of a five-star recruit in recent memory. So it would be dope. I mean, I, I don't I don't think I've given up on him, but at the same time, I also was like, dude, you should go back. You could, That's you what could I be, you know, if you kill it next year, you could be a lottery pick maybe. Yeah, he was the like, top. You'd be like, he was a top recruit coming out of Texas. Yeah, that says a lot. Tenth overall. Yep. Damn. I mean, but I don't know. I think he's a guy where if he kills it during uh during his next season in mm-hmm. college, he could he could come all the way back up to lottery. But now at this mm-hmm. point, you're hearing positivity about this. Do you think someone says, Hey, I think so. We come we we come get you right at the top of the second round. I don't See, do you think he's a first round talent now just because no, of that? Thank I don't. you. Okay, okay. Um, I'm trying to read your your emotions over no, there, man. The, the thing is that here's the thing I'm trying to think of if I'm Quentin Grimes is, let's say a team says, yep. hey, we'll take you top of the second. Part of me goes, hey, that's nice. I don't like that promise. I'm going to come back be a first rounder next year. Like, yep. Part of me goes, does he do the Jonte Porter without being a first rounder? Because Jonte last year was a first rounder and came back to try to up his stock even more. Um, Daniel Gafford, same thing, was in our top 25 for Brandon and I. Yep. And basically it was our big board came out and then he decided to come back to college. He was in our top 25 and it was like, holy crap, why is he coming back? He's a first round talent. If Quentin Grimes gets a second round promise, I would still go back if I was him because I think that what he showed here is, hey, I am good enough to be... Not necessarily a first-round pick this year, because I wouldn't take him in the first round. But if he goes back to school, improves his game, Mm -hmm. I think he can improve himself to be a first-round pick next year. Yeah, entirely possible. 
right, I've, I've got One some more positivity. Guy? Okay, Dave going winners now. Positivity. <laughs> I'm going with, we saw something interesting out of Jalen Leck, a guy who mm-hmm. came off, uh, again, he was a fifth-year high school player. Yeah. Sean and I had mentioned him last week or the week before. He, uh, pretty explosive player. Mm-hmm. Dunker. Doesn't seem to have much of a shot yet. But good size, measured in at six foot four and a quarter, with a six foot eight and a quarter wingspan, which is dope. Uh, the thing with him, apparently, uh, per a lot of rumor mills, uh, the Celtics front office has been scouting them, scouting him for about two years now. Mm-hmm. And after his measurables and a little bit of time in the five and five, yeah, it looks like he uh, might have a promise from the Celtics to go in the second, maybe second round. Hmm. Uh, they've got you know a handful of picks in the first, but they still have they a second a ton rounder. Of picks overall, so they could they could move up to get him early in the second. He's someone who is interesting because offensively, man, this man is just he is he's got great size for the point guard position, mm-hmm. but at the same time, that intensity of throwing down just gives you Russell Westbrook impressions. Well, and I just, for me, I wonder overall, because when I listen to you and Sean talk about the combine guys before the combine, yeah, um, when you're like, we're just going to go through 50 names and yeah, just go through all of them. It literally was. <laughs> it was crazy. The thing it's an that, hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> the thing that I'm sitting here and kind of yeah. wondering about yeah. is that point guard position, because... We've got Ja, yep. we've got Kobe, yep. we've got Darius Garland. Correct. After that, it's like, who are you going to... Like, you got to yeah. find your diamond into the rough. You do. Shamori Pond, second rounder. Ty Jerome, second rounder. Carson Edwards, second rounder. Um, Jared Harper, second rounder. Like, there's no we other... We grade them as second rounders, rounders but out of desperation, a team might take one of them <sighs> in the late first. True. Because um, point guard is so thin in this class. Do you think someone trades up to take um, lack in the... I the Celtics by all means apparently seem to be just enamored with the kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, I mean, he's got good size. He can't shoot for a lick though. So Depen- I think depending you need to on work what on they that. do, do they take him at twenty two? Oh, that seems awfully high. But depending that's the same on, range. Depending on what they is, do, my boy Anthony went right and twenty. They've got fourteen and twenty in this draft. Where where did Anthony go pick wise? For me, Simons. 24. Yeah, I Portland. mean, that's... His game was so much better. Like, offensively, You're he's saying still, game Anthony was, was so much quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, his shot was just incredible. And that's the that thing. That 22 pick, though. You know who went 22 last year? Whom? Clutchison, Dave. Hmm. It's, a, it's a cursed pick. Hella disappointing. <laughs> um... I don't think I don't think he's worth the first round talent, but I mean you're, Clutch, you mentioned that Clutchinson was a guy that people are like, oh, the Bulls kind of reached at twenty two, right? <laughs> we did. We um, promised him twenty two. Really? Seems like a lot for a player who's not been able to produce, and especially as an older mm-hmm. player in college. But whatever, yeah. not a Bulls fan topic today. Yeah. Uh, um, but, but the Celtics, <laughs> if they took him at twenty two, would that be a Simmons or a Hutchinson? I mean, it's a reach, but he's young and he's big. Mm-hmm. So if you can teach him to shoot, it could be worthwhile. The last guy I'm going to bring up, I don't know if you have any more. If you do, do yours. we can say nope. afterwards. The last guy I'm going to bring up is Carson Edwards. Um, and the reason why. Why why Carson Edwards? For me is because he disappointed. Oh, like To me, it was no. one of those where he had a chance to kind of cement himself for like, this is what you're going to get from me. Yeah. And now we're getting articles like the one that I'm seeing out of the what is this the local indiana papers um but like journal and courier um jconline.com whatever his role carson edwards looking to impress nba teams during the draft process and it's like now we're looking at it and it's like he might not even like teams might have to look and go what's your role going to be on the team because the thing that sean's always said when i brought up carson edwards Mm -hmm. sean would always be like dude small and I'd be like, yeah, but dude can score. He can. But it's like now if teams don't even see you as like the, yeah, you can be a scorer off our bench and you're not fit into a role, Yeah, it's going to be hard for him. Like I, I don't think that he is done by any means, but it was he was one of the guys that kind of took a hit at the combine. And I feel like with guys like you brought up with Lack, like – Shamori Ponds and all these other point guards mm-hmm. that are around that, even Ty, Ty Jerome out of Virginia, all these other guards being there that they might overpass him and he might go down lower than I thought he was going to be at. 
Last thing I'm going to ask you, though, before I wrap this up. I'm going to rapid fire some names off after that. Are there any guys that you think are for sure going to pull their name out of the draft process because of what happened at the Combine? You know, I don't. I don't have any guarantees yet because everything's still so fluid. Um, I know there's a lot of guys who I don't think are, like, Mm -hmm. draft-worthy, but that doesn't mean they're going to pull their names out and go back to college. Because, of course, if you get that promise, you're like, Deuces, I'm going. It's hard to say no to guaranteed mm-hmm. money. Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm going to pass on that one for now. All right. Who's some rapid-fire names you want to mention here at the end? All right, so great measurements and a Jody Drills from KZ Akpala. Mm-hmm. The dude is huge, and he plays with all that size, mm-hmm. um, and he's got good speed for it, so great for him. I'm going to say Talon Horton Tucker, Didn't shorter than I thought. Up. Dude, that wingspan, though. But that wingspan, though. <laughs> that wingspan, though. Uh, Dallin Horton Tucker is a weirdly shaped man. The Bucks are going to trade up for him, right? Uh, well, he, Naturally. The guy who's on in charge of the team wingspan is on the Magic now. Oh, okay. So he's their two of the future. Oh, okay. He can't shoot well, but he's so, their two so of the future. So we're saying lock it in, Dallin Horton Tucker, 16th. Mm, I hope not, but maybe. <laughs> magic trade down for him, then. They're maybe. Gonna get him. Maybe. He, he's an interesting one. Um, outside of those two guys, uh, Darius Basley did show up and mm-hmm. does look like he is a distributing big, which is nice. Um, nothing, nothing horrible, nothing great. Mm-hmm. Just, he looks like he's still able to play basketball in the five and five. It was just like a, you know, uh, are you able to play with other people again? Cause you know, yeah. we haven't seen you play with people outside of like your own gym. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting. Uh, Jonte border cut weight. Good for you, Jonte. A lot of people gave you shit last year about your body fat and you being fat. Not so bad. Uh, let's work on those knees now. Let's work on those knees now. Uh, who else was there? There was one other guy. Oh, Jared Culver measured in as okay. we expected, six six and uh, six six and three quarters with shoes on, giving him that big guard mm-hmm. size. Love it because that was the big thing we were talking about. Is he like his college measurement was six five? Was, so him being six six and was it you that thought he was going to be smaller than the size? I was hoping he would be bigger. Yeah, I, but, we were all hoping bigger. Yeah, but. I can't remember who it I was. I made a joke if it would be funny if it okay. was smaller. Because I thought there was one of us, Sean or you, that was like, I think he's smaller than his size. Um, no. I couldn't remember. No, we, we all knew he was bigger. Listed. We all knew he was bigger than 6'5". <coughs> it was just mm-hmm. like, was he 6'7"? Yeah. And he did come in right just a, just a hair below that. Mm-hmm. And then the final guy, because it's Sean. So Naz Reed. <laughs> Man, that guy is out of shape. The goat man. Somehow, the goat, right? Somehow compared to everyone else there, like he did oh. not look great. So unfortunate for Naz Reed. I think he wins the title for body fat. He does body fat percentage. He is the champ. Unfortunate for him. It's a bad thing to be the champ at. It is also. Uh, Talon Horton Tucker has the same hand size as you. <laughs> Just think about that. Has the same hand size as Naz, Naz Reed. Reed. Yup. Ooh. Just, you know, one inch below Taco Fall. It's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Does Naz Reed come back? No. No. I mean, that's one where it's like, hey, like we saw John Tay have the same thing where John Tay was kind of bigger. And yeah, was and like, John hey. Tay broke his freaking knees again. No, no, no. I know that. But I'm saying like, I'm not saying he <laughs> should, but I'm saying will Naz Reed take the same route as a John Tay where it's like, oh, I know I could be higher than this. I don't um, think and so. And I kind of mess things up here um the last guy i'm gonna throw out there is gotta throw some nope not love, the right one i was love to do. other luca i was oh no i wasn't gonna say that luca um, samak yeah i was gonna go with roby out of nebraska oh yeah he actually Isaiah looked pretty Roby. good um, pretty got, bouncy gotta throw my uh first off gotta throw the uh love to the big 10 and also ring ring fred hoiberg on the phone because now he's the head coach of the nebraska corn Huskers. yeah um but this is where you guys come in let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section who are some guys we didn't mention that were winners losers your thoughts on the combine let us know in the comment section down below